My name is Jerry Lee. I'm the Jaguar project pilot here at BAC Wharton concerned with Jaguar handling trials. The purpose of this film is to acquaint you with Jaguar's handling at high incidence, loss of control and recovery procedures. We have a massive wealth of evidence on which to draw and I hope to give you a lasting visual impression of the aircraft's behaviour from film taken from the cockpit, from the rear cockpit of a two-seater, from a chase aircraft and also from the ground. Let's look at recovery at an early stage and develop the theme into recovery at a later stage and then after a, the departure has actually taken place. First of all then, recovery at an early stage. This piece of film taken from the rear cockpit of a two-seater shows the wing rock developing accompanied by yawing motion and the pilot easing forward on the stick to achieve an early recovery. Here's the same thing once again, recovering at a slightly later stage. The wing rock, yawing oscillations, the pilot pushing forward on the stick now to recover. Now we have recovery when a departure has actually taken place. Here the pilot pulls, exceeding the incidence limitations. The aircraft rolls, departs. He centralizes the controls to reduce incidence and the aircraft recovers. In all cases, from recovery at an early stage to recovery after the departure has taken place, recovery action is the same and is simply moving the stick forward to reduce incidence. In other words, centralizing the controls. You'll notice that in the last two sequences of film that the aircraft recovered in an autorotative rolling motion, which Sandy Burns mentioned during his theoretical study. We'll go into that in more detail later. But now let's look at configuration of four CBLS on the aircraft, which displays slightly different characteristics. And you'll see that the pilot holds the aircraft in wing rock for quite some time. You'll also notice on this film clip that the canopy has sprouted MDC, which is a development fit put on the aircraft for the later part of the spinning trials. Here the pilot pulls into the turn. The wing rock begins. It continues. continues and eventually the pilot recovers by centralizing the controls. Now for the full spin. The Jaguar is not spin prone and in fact spins have not been demonstrated except from entries between 150 and 300 knots. But once it does spin it takes a long time to recover. I'm speaking now of the single seater because for the two-seater, development flying has failed to produce a recovery using conventional flight controls alone. Now let's have a look at some film then of a single-seater spinning down at east. And you'll notice that it's a very highly oscillatory motion. It is in fact a fight between aerodynamic and inertial moments on the aircraft, and neither of them wins. This is in no way a conventional spin, as you can see. It's a falling leaf manoeuvre, Note the reverse flow through the engines. They've probably flamed out. Here it is filmed from the pilot's cockpit. This gives you some idea of the disorientating effects. You really can't be sure which way the aircraft is rolling and yawing. The impression gains that it's going to the right.
Now for the spin, filmed from the rear cockpit of a two-seater aircraft. As you can see from the effect on the pilot's head, it's a highly oscillatory motion. It's bound to be very uncomfortable. Recovery in this case was achieved by using an anti-spin parachute. As I mentioned earlier, we've not been able to demonstrate recovery using conventional flight controls for the two-seater aircraft. This piece of film shows the instrument indications and I think it merits some examination. In the center, you'll see the attitude indicator, the airspeed indicator is on the left, the altimeter below, and at the top right is the engine RPM. This is the layout of the French panel. We'll go through the sequence in a moment to examine the spin itself. Note the oscillations on the airspeed at the moment between 0 and 120 knots. You'll see as recovery is achieved, the airspeed has gone to 200 and the aircraft is no longer spinning. Here we have once again the aircraft entering the spin. The airspeed reduces to 0. The highly oscillatory motion is shown very clearly on the attitude indicator and the altimeter can be seen winding down. The port engine RPM is reduced to a sub-idle stagnated condition. Watch the airspeed indicator closely. It's oscillating and the oscillations increase each time. And now as the speed reaches 200 knots, the spin is over.